I'm Jonathan Parker. Uh, this is joint work with Olivia Kim and Antoinette Schwar, my colleagues at MIT. This paper is about the owners of small businesses and the extent to which during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic and the declaration of the national emergency, they were able to maintain their standard of living or consumption spending um, despite potentially significantly large declines uh, in revenues. And so we basically have two questions that we're after here. By what channels were the revenues of small businesses uh, hammered or hit and reduced following the declaration of the national emergency on average? Most of the uh, change could be due to local uh, infection rates, COVID-19 levels locally. It could be due to state or local responses, non-pharmaceutical interventions like shelter in place orders, or it could be due just to the national economic situation and the changing economic uncertainty. The second question is, given these revenue declines, how did those feed into the standard of living of the owners of small businesses? We don't know a lot about how exposed small business owners are to the volatile revenues that typically accompany small businesses. And this is certainly an extreme case of volatility. And so we want to see how hard has it been uh, on small business owners, at least in the early stages of the pandemic. So we have three main findings. The first of all, we find that revenues and expenses and the consumption of the owners of these small businesses all fell by about 40% at the declaration of the national emergency in mid-March and remained reasonably low um, over about two to three months, uh, the early stages of the pandemic. Um, the drop in this performance, the decline in revenues, was vast majority of that was due to just the national emergency, the declaration of the national emergency, the concern over the pandemic, the rise in economic uncertainty, and general declines in economic activity not related to local infection rates or shelter-in-place orders. Those only contributed a modest amount to the declines in uh, revenue for small businesses. And then finally, at least in the early stages of the pandemic, despite significant revenue declines, these revenue declines did not feed through into much differences in the standard of living or the consumption spending of the owners of these small businesses. And that is basically revealed in this graph here. The top blue line here shows the revenues uh, in percent change relative to actually a year before, but you can see that in the before March 15, the revenues are largely unchanged. And for the least effective industry, five industries at the four digit level, they're also unchanged after the declaration of the pandemic, if not slightly higher. The most affected industries, however, are experiencing more than 80% decline in revenues. And yet the consumption of the small business owners of the unaffected and the affected industries, the same five industries up here and the same five industries down here, the owners had very similar declines in consumption. And so that's the heart of our result, which is that the actual small business owners didn't seem to have a lot of impact, did not reduce consumption a lot when their small business um, declined, revenues declined a lot, at least on average. Why? Three possible reasons, um, and we think all three are at play. First of all, a lot of small business owners are used to weathering volatility and entered the pandemic situation with some liquidity and, and funds to draw down and use. And there we are indeed we indeed see smaller consumption impact on small businesses where the owners entered the pandemic period with more liquidity ex ante. Secondly, there was a massive increase in fiscal support from both Paycheck Protection Program, economic impact payments, some of these business owners would have been eligible for some of the UI extensions and expansions. So um, median liquidity across industries actually uh, rises um, following the declaration of the pandemic in the accounts, meaning account balances grow. So the massive fiscal support also helped insulate small business owners from the collapse of their small businesses. And indeed, the Paycheck Protection Program was targeted that way. Finally, all households were reducing their spending. You couldn't go to entertainment or plays and lots of restaurants shut down and a lot of sort of consumption declined, which means that even if your revenues or profits declined to some extent, you don't need as much to uh, consumption. Uh, nobody's doing it, it's a bad time. And so um, some revenue decline could happen <coughs> without feeding into consumption just because you need slightly less income where, where you'd like to, of course, have the full income. But, um, the, the ability to spend it in certain circumstances in, in this period was low. The data we're using come from the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute, which makes uh, made this anonymized data set available to us, and we helped to, um, to build it. 
to um, create account balances of business owners and link them to the account balances of the small businesses that they run the, in the small business account space. Um, the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute uses Chase Bank data, gathers it together in the Institute in an anonymized form, and tries to use it to, to themselves and to allow sometimes uh, outside researchers to create um, studies that we think inform the public, uh, the public interest and, and provide data like this. So this is one of our uh, one of these studies, and we'd like to thank them a lot. Um, and of course, the views of this paper reflect our own analysis and not that, um, or the views of the, of the bank or the Eugene Institute. Um, the first fact is that the average's revenues and expenses um, fell a lot relative to a year ago, on average, across all small businesses. Um, and this is about 40%. With some rebounds, so zero here is March 15th, when the national emergency is declared. Um, and so uh, the week six is the end of March, end of April. Um, so there's some rebound in, uh, increase into May. Um, but you can see that it's a grim picture um, on average for small businesses following the declaration of the national emergency. Um, to break down the proximate causes of that, uh, we'll look at the um, increase in infections per thousand in the county and the increase in shelter in place or other non-pharmaceutical interventions at the state level. Um, and then also include time effects. And then what we can do is compare um, the, the regression run without time effects, where the average increase in infections and shelter in place is measured by these two variables and their effect. And with time effects, where really the increase on average from zero to some positive number is measured only from the differences across counties. That is, it really is due only to the local impact of what's going on locally, not the average change of all of the, um, the um, shelter in place and infections nationally. Um, and this, this picture shows, the red line shows what happens um, if we don't include the time effects and we subtract the effect of shelter in place and infections. Uh, and you get the red line, which says that really a lot of this is due to shelter in place and infections, but the national response as well as just the local response. If we just subtract the impact of what's going on locally, we get the blue line instead of the black line, i.e. the very small response to local shelter in place or um, or, or infection rates, the vast majority of the average decline is due to what's going on at the national level, even for small businesses. Um, turning to consumption, we have a 40% average decline in consumption, um, very much like the 40% average decline in revenues. And we're going to measure the way small businesses' revenues pass through into their owner's consumption by comparing two businesses in the same county in the same week. So. We know that business owners in general, and indeed everyone in that county, is probably reducing their consumption a bunch. And so we're going to compare the difference in that reduction, knowing that everybody's doing it to start with. So, and then we're going to look at a business which has a big effect of shelter in place and infections locally when we look at the national relationship, and a business that has very little effect of those things when we look again at, across the whole country. Um, and so businesses that are hit hard are going to see bigger declines in, in revenues when in local infection rates and local shelter in place uh, uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions are imposed. Um, and other businesses are not. And we're going to see whether those are going to cause differences in business revenues. How much do those feed through into differences in owner consumption? And the answer is very little. Sort of, We've got here 1.5% per dollar, 2% per dollar. In terms of profits, 3.6% per dollar. So cents per dollar. So, so the fee, the direct impact in the early stages of the pandemic of revenue losses, minimal. That's again, this picture I started with, the consumption of the most affected and least affected businesses very similar. The consumption of the most, the revenues of the least affected businesses and the revenues of the most affected businesses dramatically different. And so our, our more structural analysis or our more cleanly identified analysis um, gives the same answer as that very broad picture. Why? Well, Massive fiscal responses, constraints to lower levels of spending, uh, and um, self-insurance. So here's just the account balances part of that picture. Median change in business and household checking accounts rises between March and April and between April and May. So that says that actually people are, to some extent, small business owners are actually accumulating wealth and small businesses are actually accumulating liquid wealth during this period. Um, that suggests a massive fiscal response. If we break that down by the most and least affected industries, 
um, the low, most affected small businesses and the most affected industries see a significant decline initially in the um, their account balances, and then they're recovering by the end of May, by by the end of May or by May. Sorry, um, it is the month of May. Um, the the in the owners' accounts in the most affected industries um, also drop initially and then recover. And of course, in the least affected industries, um, the account balances are just rising steadily. And so that actually we know in general from similar data and from the J.P. Morgan Chase analyses that have been done since, with more recent data, that a lot of these account balances have remained high on average or even on median um, through the summer and into at least the early part of the fall before starting to decline. So. Large negative shocks to small business revenues and to owner consumption. The large fraction of the drop in revenues is driven by the national situation. Only modest effects of local infections and shelter in place or other non-pharmaceutical inventions, interventions. And modest pass-through of shocks to business income into the consumption of their owners. Um, possibly due, in part due to pre-existing liquidity, and it also substantially appears due to the massive fiscal response in the economic impact payments in the Paycheck Protection Program of the CARES Act. Um, we hope to get back and look at what happens throughout the rest of the year in this, this relationship because this is just covering the early stages of the pandemic, which, while very bad, seem to have been mitigated by preparation and fiscal responses. Thank you very much.